What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to talk to you all about contrast. Now the dictionary definition of contrast is when something is strikingly different from something else. So throughout the video I'm going to create this illustration and as I do it I'm going to talk to you guys all about contrast. How to add it, the importance of it, and other things that I probably can't think of right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my drawing in half like so. And I'm going to do one side without contrast, and I'm going to do the other side with contrast. So that way by the end of the video, you get a visual definition of the word contrast. So before I get into talking about the main subject of the video, um, I'm going to first talk to you guys and sort of rant about what I'm drawing here, which is obviously the Nickelodeon logo. Now me being the person that I am, I'm a 2000s kid by the way, I was born in 01. I personally like the old Nickelodeon logo rather than the new one. And at the time I was born, Rugrats being the popular show that it kind of still is today, was 10 years old when I was born, the original Rugrats. And with the Nickelodeon shows that I grew up with, like a little bit of Rugrats, SpongeBob, Dora the Explorer, Go Diego Go. Like at the time when I was growing up, I was around like four or five years old. So it was like anywhere before 2010. I was still given some VHS tapes because at the time that's really what it was, VHS tapes and whatnot, video cassette tapes. And some of the ones that I had, like the Rugrats ones I know, they were orange tapes. And I know that usual VHS tapes were black or orange, or at least that's what I had growing up. So me being the person that I am, drawing the old Nickelodeon logo in this video really takes me back to my childhood in the 2000s. If you are a 2000s kid you'll understand because you know back in the day watching cable tv it was like Nickelodeon. like there's none of that anymore so even though i was born in 2001 and able to remember stuff like this i kind of consider myself as a 90s kid because things that i grew up with are also things that my parents or so grew up with because at the time they were teenagers and possibly half of the things that they grew up on being teenagers are like some of the things that I grew up with being a 2000s kid. Like the old Pac-Man video game, uh, the classic Xbox, 90s cartoons on VHS tapes, Windows XP, and other things like that. But if you are a 2000s kid and you're watching this video and you remember anything else, please let me know down in the comments. Because definitely nostalgic stuff like that will give me inspiration. So please don't hesitate. But now that we're done talking about that, let's talk about contrast. Contrast is a concept that has always been used to engage viewers and create meaning within a single work of art. Oftentimes, it was called the golden rule. Like I stated before, contrast in art is created from color contrasting, light and dark, big and small, or in other words, size, and other elements of art. Artists like myself define contrast as an excuse to put two opposites together in a composition or an illustration, or a design, or whatever the case may be. Personally, I use color, value, and size contrast in my works. But whenever I'm coloring, I mainly use color contrast. But I use color contrast the most, and I'm gonna tell you how you can use it. So looking at this color wheel, if you see a set of complementary colors, those are contrasting colors as well. For example, green and red, blue and orange, yellow and purple, and all other sets of complementary colors on the color wheel. But when it comes down to color contrast, the value also has to change. So here's an example. Say you're creating an illustration that's mostly green, and you're adding a pinch of red in an attempt to add in contrast. If you, the artist, are doing so, you must consider value. If you don't know what value is, value is how light or how dark a certain color is. But let's say you use just any green and just any red for said illustration or design. The values of each color would kind of clash. Here's an example. And when you're looking at this picture, it kind of hurts your eyes and it's a little hard to read. You can still read it, but it'll hurt your eyes trying to. So to better succeed at adding contrast, you can change the value of one color to a light and make the other color dark or vice versa. It would work better by being a lot easier to read to the untrained eye. But did you know that Renaissance painters also use contrast? Like Rembrandt, 
I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He was a Renaissance painter in the 17th century who used a technique known as chiaroscuro. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right either. But what that means is the treatment of light and shadow in a work of art. In most of his paintings, he used lighting effects to give a sense of depth. Specifically, he developed an idea to use a spotlight as a light source and the peripheries were either dark or depicted shadows. Obviously, they didn't have spotlights in the 17th century, but photographers and videographers used it to provide a dramatic effect to videos and photos. Ultimately, that's an artist's main goal when using contrast, is to create drama. Okay, now let's stop for a minute so I can talk about this process. So as you can see, I did apply some shading like about here, here, here. I think on camera it seems like very saturated from this original orange color and that's okay. As long as there's still shading there and as long as it's visible, that's fine with me. Now I did apply a drop shadow with the grays and it's barely visible. And that right there is gonna make a big difference for when I come over here and finish coloring this side. So let's transition to this side so I can begin talking to you guys about this portion. There's another kind of contrast that pertains to size. With size contrast, it can evoke a variety of different ideas. Sometimes when using size contrast, there may be an absence of balance between a composition. Try to picture this. Two houses in the middle of nowhere. One house is small, I'd say about the size of the Blues Clues house. And the house that's sitting next to it or neighboring it would be 10 times the size because I don't want to say big, I just want to be a little bit more specific. But outside of illustration and drawing, sculptures can create size contrast. For example, there's a sculpture in Minnesota titled The Spoon Bridge and Cherry Sculpture. And automatically it creates size contrast because a reality, a spoon and a cherry isn't 51 to 52 feet wide like the sculpture is. Now going back to photography, using this photo as an example, it may be referred to as larger than life, which we can also use to describe this sculpture. But if this concept seems a little bit more confusing to you, try to treat it as a find what doesn't belong game. In some cases, if you're playing a game like that, it may involve seeing which color or which size or which texture doesn't belong. That's a short definition of it, but I hope you get it. So here's the finished drawing and right off the bat you can probably infer that contrast really means adding more shades. Well, you can think of it that way, but in a way it's not wrong. But to help broaden that statement, what I did on the right hand side is I used the original base color that I used for the other side of the drawing. It's the same orange, but on the right hand side where I applied more contrast, I used darker shades. And when I applied the shades, I applied a color with a completely different value from the base color that I used on both sides of the drawing. And using two colors with completely different values all throughout an illustration, that's what contrast is. So to reiterate, two opposites used throughout the same illustration, that's what contrast is. So even though I was talking about color contrast earlier, I really could have used a darker blue on the right hand side and that would still be contrast. That would be color contrast plus value contrast. But for this video, I use just value contrast because I used the same color all throughout the illustration. All I did was provide more shades on the right hand side to give a differentiation of the term value and to further explain the concept of contrast. So I hope this video and the tips that I explained to you today gave you some insight on what contrast is if you didn't know what it was before watching this video. But if you did like the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I